Imagine if the Earth was much closer to the Sun so close that an entire year would only last a few hours. So close that gravity has locked one hemisphere into scorching daylight and the other into eternal darkness. So close that the oceans boil away, the rocks begin to melt, and lava is raining down clouds. While there is nothing like this in our solar system, planets like this, rocky, about the size of Earth, extremely hot, and close to their stars, are not uncommon in our solar system. But what are the surfaces and atmospheres of these planets really like? And are they habitable? NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is about to provide some answers. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about how James Webb Telescope is going to study two newly discovered super-Earths in the Milky Way. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. With its mirror segments beautifully aligned and its scientific instruments undergoing calibration, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is just weeks away from full operation. Soon after the first observations are revealed this summer, Webb's in-depth science will begin. Included in the investigations planned for the first year are studies of two hot exoplanets classified as super-Earths for their size and rocky composition. The lava covered 55 Cancri E and the airless LHS 3844b. Scientists will train Webb's high precision spectrographs on these planets with a view to understanding the geologic diversity of planets across the galaxy, as well as the evolution of rocky planets like Earth. So let's discuss them one by one and see if they are habitable. Super Hot Earth 55 Cancri E 55 Cancri E orbits less than 1.5 million miles from its sun-like star, completing one circuit in less than 18 hours. With surface temperatures far above the melting point of typical rock-forming minerals, the day side of the planet is thought to be covered in oceans of lava. Planets that orbit this close to their star are assumed to be tidally locked, with one side facing the star at all times. As a result, the hottest spot on the planet should be the one that faces the star most directly. And the amount of heat coming from the day side should not change much over time. But this doesn't seem to be the case. Observations of 55 Cancri E from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope suggest that the hottest region is offset from the part that faces the star most directly, while the total amount of heat detected from the day side does vary. So, does 55 Cancri E have a thick atmosphere? One explanation for these observations is that the planet has a dynamic atmosphere that moves heat around. 55 Cancri E could have a thick atmosphere dominated by oxygen or nitrogen, explained Renu Hu of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, who leads a team that will use Webb's near-infrared camera near cam and mid infrared instrument miri to capture the thermal emission spectrum of the day side of the planet if it has an atmosphere web it has the sensitivity and wavelength range to detect and identify its components another intriguing question about this super earth is that it is raining lava in the evening on 55 cancuri e however Another interesting possibility is that the 55 Cancri E is not bezel locked. Alternatively, it might be like Mercury, rotating three times per two orbits, which is known as a 3 2 resonance. As a result, the planet will have a day and night cycle. This may explain why the hotter part of the planet is turning, explained Alexis Brandacker a researcher from Stockholm University who leads another team studying the planet. Just like on Earth, it will take time for the surface to heat up. The hottest time of the day will be in the afternoon, not noon. Brandecker's team plans to test this hypothesis using NIRCAM to measure the heat emitted from the illuminated side of 55 Cancari E through four different orbits. If a planet had a 3-2 echo, they would observe each hemisphere twice and should be able to detect any difference between the two hemispheres. In this scenario, the surface would heat up, melt, and even evaporate during the day, 
forming an extremely thin atmosphere that Webb could detect. In the evening, the steam cools and condenses to form drops of lava that will rain back to the surface, turning solid again as night falls. So, while 55 Kankiri E will provide insight into the strange geology of a world covered in lava, LHS 3844B provides a unique opportunity to analyze hard rocks on exoplanet surface. Let's compare it with 55 Kankiri E. Like 55 Kankiri E, LHS 3844B orbits extremely close to its star, completing one revolution in 11 hours. However, because its star is relatively small and cool, the planet is not hot enough for the surface to be molten. Additionally, Spitzer observations indicate that the planet is very unlikely to have a substantial atmosphere. So, what is the surface of LHS 3844b made of? While we won't be able to image the surface of LHS 3844b directly with Webb, the lack of an obscuring atmosphere makes it possible to study the surface with spectroscopy. It turns out that different types of rock have different spectra, explained Laura Kriedberg at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. You can see with your eyes that granite is lighter in color than basalt. There are similar differences in the infrared light that rocks give off. Kriedberg's team will use MIRI to capture the thermal emission spectrum of the day side of LHS 3844b and then compare it to spectra of known rocks, like basalt and granite, to determine its composition. If the planet is volcanically active, the spectrum could also reveal the presence of trace amounts of volcanic gases. So, the importance of these observations goes far beyond just two of the more than 5,000 confirmed exoplanets in the galaxy. They will give us fantastic new perspectives on Earth-like planets in general, helping us to learn what the early Earth might have been like when it was hot like these planets are today," said Kriedberg. Moreover, these observations of 55 Cancri E and LHS 3844b will be conducted as part of Webb's Cycle 1 General Observers Program. General Observers programs were competitively selected using a dual anonymous review system, the same system used to allocate time on Hubble. Now that we know about these super-Earth, there is another important question which needs answering. Are super-Earths habitable? Rocky planets larger than our own, so-called super-Earths, are surprisingly abundant in our galaxy, and stands as the most likely planets to be habitable. Getting a better idea of their interior structures will help predict whether different planets are able to generate magnetic fields, thought to be conducive for life to survive. Most of these mysterious planets are discovered when they transit in front of small stars and cause the starlight to dim. From this, researchers can work out the mass and radius of the planet, and the evidence suggests that these worlds are incredibly diverse in their makeup. Super-Earths can be all sorts of things, really, said Dr. Waldman. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.